Hello everybody and welcome back to another anatomy tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to identify the different liver segments on a CT scan. We're going to first look at this diagram to understand how we separate the liver into the various segments and then we're going to go to axial CT slices and I'm going to show you which structures you need to identify in order to figure out which segment of the liver you're actually looking at. So let's have a look at this diagram. We're looking at the patient front on. The patient's left is on this side and the right is on this side here. And posterior to the liver, we can see our IVC running upwards. And in the superior aspect, it's receiving blood from three different tributaries, our left hepatic vein, our middle hepatic vein, and our right hepatic vein. And you can see from the diagram that these veins separate the liver into four different sections. We've got our left lateral section, left medial section, right medial section, and our right lateral section here. Now on the right hand side, our liver actually runs posteriorly round the back here. So sometimes this is called the right anterior section and the right posterior section. That's interchangeable, medial lateral or anterior posterior. You can see that we separate then these sections into segments, a superior and an inferior segment. And this separation is not on the diagram here, but we'll have our portal vein coming into the liver, giving us our right portal vein and our left portal vein. And it's those portal veins that separate the superior and the inferior segments from one another. And I'm going to show you how to identify that on a CT scan. Then in terms of numbering, we go in this clockwise fashion here, if we were looking straight at the patient. So we'll start with two on our left superior lateral section, work our way three, four is the one is the odd one out where we've got a four A and a four B. It's easy to remember four A is above, four B is below. So four is this whole segment, but it's separated into two different uh, segments, 4A and 4B. Then we go five, head round posteriorly and inferiorly, six. We go superiorly, still posterior, seven, and then into eight. And you may notice that one is here with its own little vein coming in there. This is what's known as the chordate lobe, and it's got its own different segment, and it's very easy to identify it on a CT scan, separate from the rest of these lobes. And that is going to be segment one here. It acts as its own functional unit. So back in the day, we used to separate the lobes based on their morphology. But now we prefer to separate them into these segments because each segment here acts as its own functional independent unit. So segment eight would be able to survive on its own, independent of the other segments, because it's got its own blood supply, its own venous and bilious and lymphatic drainage. And that helps Clinically, if we were to then remove a segment or leave a segment behind, we would know that that segment would function independently of all the other segments. So let's move on to our CT scans. We're going to be looking at a portal venous phase CT scan of the abdomen here. These are axial slices, and I'm just scrolling up superiorly through the liver here. We want to see that the liver is in fact on the right hand side of the patient. Want to scroll through, looking at the liver parenchyma, scrolling all the way through. Can we see any masses? Is there anything abnormal looking? Going all the way down to the bottom, and then we can scroll up to the top. Now, the first thing that we need to identify is our inferior vena cava below, so that we can find our hepatic veins coming into the inferior vena cava. And we know the IVC is a right-sided structure. It lies posterior to the liver. So we can suspect the vessel, the large vessel that lies posterior to the liver on the right-hand side, is in fact our IVC. And one good way of checking here is we can see our renal veins coming into the IVC itself. If you watch the abdominal aorta video, I'll link it above, we know that our left renal vein runs anterior to our aorta and posterior to our SMA there. So we can see our left renal vein, our right renal vein coming into our IVC. And as we scroll upwards, we'll see that left, middle, and right hepatic veins, you can see them here coming into the IVC there. Now we're going to use those hepatic veins, our left hepatic vein, we're going to draw a line like this, middle hepatic vein, draw a line like that, and right hepatic vein, draw a line out to the periphery like that. We're going to use that to separate it into our four different sections. Then we need to identify our portal vein to see where we're going to split those sections into a superior and inferior segment. So our portal vein lies anterior to our IVC. It gets blood from our splenic vein here, as well as our SMV, so our superior mesenteric vein. That comes to form our portal vein. Portal vein comes into the porta hepatis here and divides into our left portal vein and our right portal vein. So our right portal vein is slightly inferior to this left portal vein. 
And we use that as our horizontal level to separate our superior and our inferior segments from one another. So let's start at segment one and work our way all the way to segment eight. We're going to start at the top of the liver here so we can see where we are separating our lobes. And as you'll notice, just medial to our IVC, there's this functional unit here, a separate lobe called our chordate lobe. We can scroll all the way through that chordate lobe. We can see a vessel coming into that chordate lobe and the vein draining into the IVC here. And the chordate lobe is actually really clinically important. So it's important to look at the chordate lobe on every scan you go through. Look at its size especially. Sometimes they can become much bigger in cirrhosis and our right lobe of the liver, as that gets smaller, our chordate lobe gets bigger and the ratio between those changes and we can use that as a marker for cirrhosis. That is segment one. We look all the way through. Let's find segment two. We know that's superior and we know it's in the left lateral section. So we separate again here our left hepatic vein. We know that lateral to that is our segment two. So we follow all of this is segment two all the way down until we get to the level of the left hepatic vein here. So above that is all segment two here. As we get to the level of our left hepatic vein, we know that inferior to segment two, we've been labeling down in clockwise position. Below that is going to be segment three. So let's see then segment three all the way down here. We can see our falciform ligament coming through here. Some people use that as a, a marker between segment three and segment four, but technically we should be using that hepatic vein. So sometimes that falciform ligament is varied amongst people. Often surgically we'll use that as a point to um, take out that lobe of the liver, but technically we need to use that left hepatic vein in order to delineate segment three from segment four. Then let's head back up to the top of the liver again. We know that we have 4A and 4B on that left medial segment of the liver. So in between our left hepatic vein and our middle hepatic vein, all of this here is segment 4A. 4A all the way down, it's still 4A until we get to the level of our left portal vein. Below that now is going to be 4B. All the way down, all of this section here is segment 4B. So if we were to see a lesion here, we could write confidently in our report, this is segment 4B, and the person reading that report will understand where we're talking about. Then we need to find segment 5. Now we know that segment 5 is on the right anterior section, and it's an inferior segment. As we come around, we have 5, 6, 7, and 8 back up. So let's find our divisions again. Here's our middle hepatic vein and here's our right hepatic vein. We know that if we scroll down here until we see our right portal vein, our right portal vein, we know that inferior to that here is our segment five. All of this here is segment five and as we scroll up until we get to the level of our right portal vein, that is all segment five. And then we know posterior to that, or around the corner, laterally and posterior, is segment six as we go around labeling it. So if we go back up to the top, find our right hepatic vein. This here, we follow this segment down all the way until we can see our right portal vein. We know that inferior to our right portal vein, all of this is segment six coming down. Sometimes the segment can really dive down. That's called Riedel's lobe, and that's a normal anatomical variant. Don't confuse that for hepatic hypertrophy. So we've got, there we go here at the back here, posteriorly, we've got segment six. And as we head up superiorly, get to the level of the right portal vein, we know that above that, this segment here is all segment seven. Posterior to this right hepatic vein and, and superior to that right portal vein is our segment seven all the way down until there, till that level. And as we go up here, up here, this is all segment seven. And that leaves us with our last segment, the segment anterior to segment seven. We can see our middle hepatic vein, our right hepatic vein, and we're superior here. We're at the top level. You can see we're actually into the thorax here, our lung field. We can see that this segment all the way here, this segment, you can see why it's sometimes called the right anterior segment or the right medial segment. As we follow that down, this is all segment eight until we get to this level, the level of the right portal vein. And as I've done with various other talks in the past, I'm going to link this Radiopedia playlist below. And as you can see at the end of this playlist, there's a beautiful color-coded diagram here showing you the various segments of the liver. 
And as I've said before, learning anatomy is all about repetition, going through multiple scans, seeing the subtle variations and identifying the structures for yourself. That's how you'll start remembering these things over and over again. There's no use in remembering strange mnemonics that you're just going to forget. Repetition, repetition, repetition will allow you to confidently identify the different anatomy. So I hope that's helped. Let me know what other anatomy videos you would like me to cover in the future. And until next time, I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.